Hey, what is up guys? Jack and Matt here with the Toaster Bros, and today we bring you the complete $700 gaming setup. Let's get right into it, shall we? But first, a word from today's sponsor. This video is brought to you by GVG Mall, an online marketplace to get access to some discount game key, discount? <laughs> The heat's getting to me. Fuck. Let's just take our shirts off. <laughs> I'm trying to forget my thoughts here, right? <laughs> it smells like asshole in here. <laughs> <laughs> An online marketplace that gets you great discounts on things like game keys and more specifically, Windows 10 licenses. So if you just use code TB20 with the link we give you down below, you can get things like Windows 10 Pro for 20% off, which makes it like 12 something dollars. Great deal, fully activated. We use that Windows 10 key discount to actually activate this system right here that we're gonna then pass on to somebody who's gonna really enjoy the setup. So please, if you wanna get access to a Windows 10 key for cheap, use TB20 on checkout and use the link in the description down below. Now, let's get into the setup, shall we? So of course, with all great systems, we have once again gotten Ryzen based, and we'll show you guys some building as I talk about this, but we have an old fashioned Ryzen 1600, which is a six core, 12 thread processor, a really good gaming processor, and it is a little bit on the cheap side right now. This is the Gigabyte B450M motherboard, which is a really good motherboard. And then for the actual graphics card, we have a 1066 gig, switching up from the RX 580 for once. And the six gig is a really good version. We actually only paid about 100 and like $30 for it on eBay. We'll have an exact price in the description down below. We also have two four gig sticks of G-Skill Ripjaws RAM at 2400 megahertz. We have an EVGA 600 watt power supply, which Matt actually ordered off of EVGA B-Stock. We'll have the price listed down below. For storage, we decided to just go with an M.2 drive. This is a 500 gigabyte Crucial MX500. Makes sure we don't have to have any extra cords running through the case, and it's really small, and it flashes with really cool orange lights, so, you know, had to go with it. And then for the fans, we actually have a three pack of 140 millimeter Anities fans. They look very cool. So for the case, we have the Cooler Master Q500L. This is basically the Q300L, but it actually fits full ATX motherboards. We actually did not really utilize that here. We still went with the micro ATX board because it was cheaper. But then for the fans, because it only comes with one fan in the back, we decided to put a three pack of 140 millimeter Anities fans that are full RGB. They look really good. They're remote controlled, and you, I think you can control them with the motherboard as well, but we like to be old fashioned with it and just use a remote. The total for this build was just a little bit over $530, which is a really respectable price for a build like this and then that left the rest of the money to go to the peripherals such as the monitor keyboard mouse and headset and which Matt will talk about that stuff now for the rest of this setup, we went with a headset, keyboard, mouse, and monitor. And first up, the headset. This is the Impow EG3, which is actually a very comfortable headset and looks very retro-y, but also kind of futuristic at the same time with this really cool light coming through. They're very comfortable. Zach's been using them at his setup for a while now. And as you can tell, they actually fit pretty well. They have a microphone that you can move around and it works pretty well for what it is, especially at the price range that it comes in at. And again, prices will be in the description down below. Low. But thanks again to Impow, they did send this over and we've been using it for a while. Very sturdy construction and the sound quality is actually pretty on par for a gaming headset. We also want to give a big thanks to Red Dragon for their Gaming Essentials Keyboard and Mouse Combo Kit. This comes with a full mechanical keyboard with like knockoff red switches and their gaming mouse, which this kit retails for $50, guys. A full size mechanical keyboard with RGB. You can change the settings on the fly on the keyboard and also a mouse that actually feels very hefty, it has a good build quality to it. And all together you get that for 50 bucks. It's honestly a no brainer. And I I would definitely check this one out in the link in the description down below. Not to mention, you can swap the switches out if you want to. For 50 bucks, it's crazy. Now for the monitor. In a budget setup like this, you're probably going to be leaning towards just your basic 1080p 60Hz monitor, and that's what we have right here. With the BenQ GL2460, you have your 1080p 2 millisecond response time monitor, standard 60Hz, but it actually looks really good. 24 inches LED, and honestly, this is a basic monitor that you can get for around $100. You can get a lot of different monitors at this price range, but this one from BenQ, a reputable company, just kind of appealed to us more compared to the other ones that are out there, but there are a lot of options you can go with and this is perfectly fine for gaming especially on a $700 setup and you can always upgrade that monitor or maybe get another one if you want a dual monitor setup but now that we've gone over this entire setup that values at around $700 let's get right into testing the games on this setup and see if Jackson kills some people in Apex Legends and some other Battle Royale games all right guys so the first game we're going to be testing is Apex Legends and we are in a mixture of medium high settings if you want to see, check out the settings here real quick Jackson's going to be playing on this setup and giving you some impressions also while 
while he's playing based on how responsive it is. Again, the setup is rocking a Ryzen 5 1600 in a GTX 1060 6 gig. And Can right we now we're getting- about these FPS? Yeah, we're getting like well over 100 FPS right now. Now, as you look at the performance again, we are hovering closer to around 70 to 60 FPS. Again, the frame rate limiter is off, so there is no locked FPS here. We're gonna get the actual performance. CPU temps are performing admirably. We're getting about 53 degrees with the stock cooler. Keep in mind right now, our AC in the office is actually out and we're like sweating to get this video done. So keep in mind some of the temperatures might be pretty high compared to what it normally would be. Um, but overall, performance is really solid. If you can check out these percentages up here, we're getting about 97% usage on the GPU, which indicates that there really is no CPU bottleneck. It seems to be very GPU bound, which is really cool for the Ryzen 5 1600. Um, but let's see if Jackson can get some kills real quick. This guy doing? I'm gonna get straight clapped, dude. Ooh. Oh God, there's more. Ah, oh, knocked, dude. It was, it was a good effort. All right, guys, so the next game we're gonna be testing is Fortnite, and we're running this on Epic Settings 1080p to just show the maximum potential of this system. Again, we're seeing a similar story where there's pretty even distribution across the board with the GPU getting utilized close to 100%, the CPU not being utilized nearly as much. So right now it seems to be that there is a GPU bottleneck in the system, but it's actually a pretty good sign then because you can always upgrade the graphics card and that Rods of 5 1600 can handle a lot more. So Jackson is dropping into Tilted after becoming a pro Apex player he doesn't even know what he's doing but he's gonna land in real quick and play this uh beautiful glorious uh, game dropping so slow yeah, it's, it's, a, it's night and day dude but yeah performance landing into tilted 85 90 fps on epic settings which is actually really impressive uh, no complaints here right now from this professional gamer. But this is a continued story, guys. This set up for $700, which is actually, again, really repeatable. This is super easy for you guys to do at home. It, it's upgradable too, with the Ryzen platform being able to go with something like third gen Ryzen at some point, uh, being able to get a different monitor, upgrade the system even more. This is like a really good all around combo um, to play all your Battle Royale games. And as you can see, with Fortnite, we're having no problems whatsoever. This man's just throwing all his TNT just to get some Explosions I going. hear him, dude. You hear him crawling. They want you. Is there armor in this game? No armor, dude. Oh, there's shields. Remember, you gotta get like the shield up. He's getting shot at. Oh, and there it is, dude. Pro player. Killed by Anonymous. I was killed by an Anonymous player. Wow. Wearing a soccer skin. Wow. Great game. How lame. Dude. Great game. All right. On to the last game. All right, guys, in the last game we are gonna be testing is PUBG. And right now we're running on high settings, 1080p. Jackson's gonna be dropping in again in his third Battle Royale back to back. <laughs> I haven't played this in a year either. But yeah, this is another test to see exactly how well the system performs. And we're getting similar results right here. The CPU usage is around 30 to 40-ish percentage and the GPU usage is hovering anywhere between like 94 and 98 percent so again this GPU is actually kind of holding back the processor a little bit so you could get a better GPU if you want to upgrade the system in the future and maybe it'd be a good idea to upgrade to like oh I don't know like a Ryzen 3000 series processor and then like a newer AMD GPU you never know man it's a good option to upgrade but as Jackson drops in we're getting anywhere between 50 to 60 FPS normally in PUBG once you land surprisingly how do you FPS, pull up. He doesn't even know how to do it. The FPS normally skyrockets after uh, you land, um, but he's, he's slowly remembering how to drop in PUBG. Slowly figuring it out. You just keep wobble it, dude. Just do a wobble. W key wobble. Again, 70 to 80 FPS. Feels pretty smooth, Jackson. Nothing to complain about. No, mm -hmm. for all high settings, it's impressive. And again, we could run this at lower settings to get high refresh rate. If you did go with a high refresh rate monitor, which there are occasional sales on when you can get high refresh rate monitors for around the same price as this one. But again, 1080p, 60 Hertz, you know, you can't really complain. As long as it's over 60 FPS, then it's pretty much what it needs to be. Oh and God, that's PUBG for his you guys. butthole blasted. <laughs> so I yeah, guys, that is the performance of this system. Let's go ahead and wrap this video up real quick. So overall, we are very impressed with this setup. For only $700, you get a monitor, keyboard, mouse, headset, and a very capable gaming PC that is easily upgradable. It's honestly a great value. 
because you guys asked for it and a lot of times we would make these builds and call it like a $600 gaming PC and then you go, well that doesn't include the keyboard, mouse, monitor, blah, blah, blah. So we were like, you know what, let's just go ahead and do that and see what type of performance we can get. And as you can see at 1080p, it maxed out every game we wanted to play, 60 plus FPS, no problem. I would love to know in the comment section down below if you have a certain budget, maybe it's super, super cheap, that you want to see a complete setup put together. That'd be a lot of fun for us to try to do because we do a lot of cheap PCs, but getting everything together for, let's say, maybe four or $300, please comment down below and we'll try to put something together. So as always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Peace out.